Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to continue working on our Manchester Design Studio project and we're going to go ahead and add the sample placeholder content to our um, page. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. We're going to continue to come back and look at um, our model here. Um, so be sure to keep um, the Manchester template.info page open. And um, we're here in Dreamweaver, and you should have the main.html file open right now. And the first area that we're going to focus on is this top area here, both with the logo and the social media icons. So I'm going to go ahead and click in my logo div right here. And whoops, we're going to go ahead and grab this image and place it into our design. So I'm going to go ahead and again click right there and use the image tag and then the SRC attribute and again once I select that and type the first quotation mark this browse option is going to come up. I can click on browse and then I'm going to go into my images folder and you'll see inside of the images folder the items we placed in the last video including Manchester this uh, Manchester Design Studio logo right here and you can see the dimensions of that image right here it's 225 by 108 and if you're making your own images you just need to go into Adobe Fireworks or Photoshop or whatever program you're using to create images and create an image that's this dimension um, that has the logo in it that you wish to use. So I'm going to select that and then click OK and again we're going to go ahead and just close that tag with a closing bracket and then I'm going to go ahead and save. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our social media icons in here. And if we go to our completed project, you'll see we've got a couple lines of text here. For additional information, please call and then a phone number. And then these six icons. So let's go ahead and place those or that in this section. So I'm going to go ahead and use a paragraph here and type for additional information. And you can see that please call is on a separate line. And I always want to make sure it's like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line break in here. And you do that by typing in just simply BR inside of brackets and that will put in a line break and then I can go ahead and type please call and then whatever phone number I'm going to use and then I'm going to go ahead and close my P tag. Break is one of those few tags like image that you don't have to place a closing tag inside of. And actually there's a few different ways that you can type this. Um, another very common way of typing it is like this where you have um, BR and then a, sl a space, a slash, and a closing bracket. Either way will work. I generally use um, just the BR inside of the brackets. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead now and preview this in a browser and make sure our two items are appearing. And again, you can see they are. There's my logo. And here is this information right there. I'll go ahead and close that out. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is, whoops, we're going to go ahead and place these social media icons into our design. Now whenever you have some sort of a list of items for a navigation, you're always going to place those in an unordered list. Any kind of navigation list, any type of menu 
is always going to be contained in an unordered list. And this will allow you to format uh, those items in any way you want. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to create my opening UL, hit enter a couple times and then close it. And then we're going to go ahead and add a list item in here. And then inside of the list item, we're going to go ahead and create a link. So with a link, what we do is we start with an A tag. So I'm going to go ahead and do my opening A tag and then href equals quote. And the first icon that we had was for Facebook. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com and then close my quotation marks and then close my bracket. Now and again this would be actually a link to your Facebook page so you would have um, not just the gen generic Facebook item there or not just the generic Facebook link but actually a link to your Facebook page. Now you'll remember after that we always again close our A tag and it's in between the opening and closing A tags that you put the item that's going to become the link. And that could be text or an image as we saw in a previous video. In this case, it's going to be an image. So I'm going to go ahead and type in IMG SRC. And then I'm going to use my browse option. And I'm already in the images folder for my project. And I'm going to go into the icons folder and you can see there's a number of different icons here. And we're not going to use the large icon, we're actually going to use the, the smaller icon. And you can see the size here is 32 by 32 pixels. If you're using your own images, simply go to Google and type in free social media icon set and you'll find just tons of free social media icons you can download and use. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click OK and you'll see it places the path to that image into my image source. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that bracket. And then finally I'm going to go ahead and close the LI tag. And you'll see why we're using um, an unordered list here um, once we start formatting. But for right now, just trust me on that. And I'm going to do my second item, which is an icon to Twitter. So I'm going to type in LI and then my link, a tag with an href. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in the link to my Twitter page. And again, I'm just putting in the generic home page for that resource. You would go ahead and put in the link to your actual Twitter page. And then I'm going to close that A tag, open up an image tag. And when I select the source attribute, again, I'm going to use the browse option here. And there's my Twitter icon. If I scroll down just a little bit more. I'll just select that and click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and close my image tag. Then I'm going to close my A tag. And then I'm going to close my list item tag. And you're going to do this for each one of the items that you go ahead and place in um, this area here. So you see I've got an RSS icon, Yelp, LinkedIn and YouTube. And really quickly before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and preview this in Google Chrome and you should see those icons appear there. And again, don't worry about the formatting right now. We're just adding content. We're going to do the formatting in the video when we start learning about CSS. So I'll go ahead and close that off and come back in here and you're just going to continue to repeat this process. I'll do li and then an a tag and an href 
and we haven't set up our RSS feed yet so the link is just going to be to a pound sign just like that and then we'll go ahead and open up our image and there's the RSS icon right there and then I'm going to go ahead and close my image tag and then I'm going to close my A tag and then I'm going to close my list item and we're going to and actually if it saves you some typing you can just simply copy and paste these items whoops copy and paste those items there and just change what you're linking to just like that and put in so copy and paste works very well with that and we'll do two more here whoops I hit browse for that one I didn't mean to we're going to go ahead and type in the next one was for Yelp and now I'll go into browse and let's find that Yelp icon there it is and then I'm going to go ahead and close my image tag close my A tag and close my list item tag and then we'll do our final one which is a link to YouTube remember to close your opening A tag and then go find the icon for YouTube close the image tag close our A tag and close our LI tag and you should have already closed the UL tag and not have to uh, worry about that and actually I've got an extra line in there I'll take that out but make sure you close your UL tag and again I'm going to save this and then I'm going to preview it in Google Chrome and you should see there's my six icons there and again they are in a list don't worry about that because we can change that in CSS this is exactly the way um, your page should look at this point go ahead and close that off and come back in here to whoops come back into my completed project and the next area that we have is this top nav area here where we're going to create links to welcome about product services gallery frequently asked questions and contact and again we're not going to worry about the drop down menus at this point we're going to do that in a later video so all we're worried about is just getting these initial links set up in our top nav area so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here a little bit and there's my top nav area and just like before since this is a list of navigation items I'm going to go ahead and place it in an unordered list hit enter a couple times and close that UL and then we'll do our list item and then we're going to go ahead and do our links so the first one I'm going to do is href and I'm going to do quote pound sign close quote and the reason why I'm doing that right now is this link is going to link to a page that doesn't exist we haven't created the index page yet we haven't created the about page so this pound sign is just acting as a placeholder for us and then I'm going to go ahead and close that a tag and just type welcome we're not using an image here like we did before and then I'm going to go ahead and close my a tag and then I'm going to go ahead and close my li tag and this one actually will be a lot easier to copy and paste I'm just going to copy that line and paste it in 
several times, six times to be precise. And then I'm just going to change this to about. And then we had products, services, gallery, and contact. We'll save that. And again, take a look at this in Google Chrome, and you should see those links appear on your page. And again, no formatting at all. At this point, we're just adding the content. You can't really format um, material that you haven't placed in um, your page very easily. So the next div we have here is the banner div. And again, that's this rotating banner area. And again, we're not going to worry about adding the rotating and the fading to this right now. We're just going to put the first image in. And then in a later video, we're going to go ahead and place, or we're going to go ahead and set up the rotation. So for right now, all I'm going to do is place an image in my banner area. So I'm going to open my image tag, put my source attribute in, and select the browse option. Now I'm still in my icons folder, but I'm going to come up and I'm going to go into my banner images, banner folder. And there's a banner. You can see the size here is 900 by 300. So if you're creating your own images, you're going to create a 900 by 300 um, image in Fireworks, Photoshop, whatever it is that you're um, using. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click OK. Close that off, save, and then preview this in Google Chrome, and you should see that image appear there. So now we're ready to come to our main content section here. And if we look at the finished project, you'll see we've got a heading that says, Welcome to Manchester Design, and then a paragraph of text. And that Welcome to Manchester Design is obviously a heading. So we're going to go ahead and create that inside of an H1 tag. So I'm going to open an H1 tag and type Welcome to Manchester Design. And then I close my H1. And then we need a paragraph of text. And um, if you downloaded the exercise files, you placed an item called lorem.html here. And you're going to go ahead and open that on up. And you can see there's lots of different paragraphs of text here waiting for you to use. Um, the numbers to the left of each one of the paragraphs of text will tell you how many lines of text that particular paragraph will take up in a 900 pixel wide area. So that's just a, a, an indication of how much text is in that area. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this first one here. You can highlight any of these you want and copy it and then just paste it whoops into my project and I'm gonna get rid of the number three there save it and then let's preview this in a browser and there's my paragraph of text and again if you didn't download um, the resources, you would just open up a paragraph tag and you need to type a paragraph of text um, in. So after that, we have a subheading here and another paragraph of text. So I'm going to go ahead and use an H2 tag because that's a subheading, not a main heading. And I'm going to go ahead and type, um, this is a subheading on the page, or whatever you want to put in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste in that paragraph again. 
because we need a paragraph of text underneath that item. Now we've got a couple of images here. And again, we're not worried about the rollover effect right now. We just want to pull the images into our um, page so we can format them later on. You're also going to notice there's a couple of small subsections down here. We're going to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and on a blank line, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and create a div. And I'm just going to give this an ID of box one. You, again, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it box one. And then we have that image inside of our box. And I'm going to go ahead and again find that. Whoops, I made a mistake here. Don't worry about that. Let me go ahead and start over here. I typed in IMG SRC. And then I'm going to use the browse option. I'm going to go into my images folder. And you should be able to find. Uh, where did I place those images? I think they are in gallery. Oh, no, they're not in gallery. Where did I place those? Oh, I was wrong. They are inside of gallery. And the one you're looking for is 1SM sepia right there. We'll click OK. And then I'm going to close my image tag off. And then again, if we go back to our project, we have a subheading here, which again is an, going to be a second level heading, and then a small paragraph of text. So I'm going to go ahead and type in H2, subheading item. And then I need a paragraph, a small paragraph of text. So I'm just going to come down here and select this item here, copy it, and paste it into my project. And again, you can just type that out however you want um, to. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that div. Now, here's where Again, spacing is going to be important for you. If we look at this, we can't really read this too terribly well. So I'm going to put an extra space in there. And I'm going to highlight these and just tab them over. And that way, that's sort of self-evident that it's a that's that contained area there. And let's go ahead and take a look at this in our browser. Make sure everything is coming up right. It is. And I'm actually just going to really quickly copy this and paste it in again. I'm going to change the div ID to box2. And I'm going to change my image here to the second image. I'm just going to put a 2 in there. You could highlight that whole thing, type a quotation mark, and use browse and find the uh, second small item that's in here. Let's see, where is it? I'm sorry, it was 4SM. And then again, make sure you close off that item, or the image tag. And then we have our H2 tag, and we have our paragraph tag there. So again, let's go ahead and look at this in a browser just to make sure that everything is appearing correctly, and it is. I'll close that off, I'll close that off. I've got quite a few of these tabs open at this point. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our right side area. And again, I'm just going to hit enter here to give myself a some white space to indicate that this is a different div. And let's go ahead and look at our completed version. 
we can see here that there's again a heading, a paragraph, and an image, and then another paragraph of text. So let's go ahead and place that in our right side area. So I'm going to go ahead and open up an H2, and I'm going to type sidebar heading there. And then again, we need a paragraph of text, a small paragraph of text. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and select this. And then we have that image right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up an image tag, use the source attribute, and select browse. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and find that image. Which one was it? It was. Let's just go ahead and use two here. There we go. And again, you can see the size of the different images right here. Um, there we go. 2SM.JPEG is what you're using. And if you're creating your own image, these are 200 by 150. So go ahead and place that. And now we have another paragraph and another heading. So again, I'm going to go ahead and grab a paragraph of text here and copy it and then paste it into my project. And then I have another sidebar heading, which I'm going to place in an H2. Just like that. And then we have an unordered list of items that are actually links, but we're just going to create them as list items right now. So again, I'm going to open up a UL tag, hit enter a couple times and close it, and then nested inside of there, I'm going to create my list items. And in this case, it was just a list of state names. And we'll do one more here. So now I've got a list of items in there. And again, let's go ahead and preview this in Google Chrome. And there is our side main sidebar heading right there. And actually, there's a mistake here. You can see sidebar heading isn't showing up as a subheading the way these other items are. Everything else here looks correct. I've got a couple of paragraphs, my image, my unordered list. So let's go ahead and take a look here and let's see what the problem is. And the problem actually is that I didn't close my H2 properly. This has, has a closing div tag right there. So I'm going to go ahead and type in H2 there. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that. Looks like I made those two mistakes there. I forgot to close my opening div tag right there. So make sure you put a closing item on there and make sure that your H2 um, is also closed. And now again, let's go ahead and take a look at our project here. We've got another small paragraph below that, and then this Twitter widget that we're actually going to do a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and just place a small paragraph of text. We'll select this one right here underneath that unordered list. And then we'll save that. So now I have all the material, except for this Twitter widget, in my sidebar area. Now, we sort of stopped working on our content area after we did these two subsections here. And we moved up to put some material in our 
right sidebar but there actually is some more material in here when you see we have another heading right here an image and a couple paragraphs of text as well as this item right down here so let's go ahead and put that in to our content section so again I'm going to come up here to my content div and I'm going to go ahead and create a subheading and then I had a couple paragraphs of text there so I'm gonna go ahead and grab let's say those two there you can grab any anything you want and paste those items in And then finally, we have oops, got some extra spaces in there. And again, the spacing isn't um, critical. The only reason why I do the spacing the way I do is to make my text more, my code more readable. And you can see we've got an image right there. So I'm going to go ahead and type in an image tag and. I'm in the gallery folder, so I need to go up, and that's what this button here does, up one level. And as I scroll down, you should see there is that image. It's called Wireframe JPEG. And I'll close that off. And then down here, we actually have this element, which I'm just going to go ahead and type into a paragraph tag and we'll close that and save it and now let's go ahead and take a look at this in Google Chrome and you can see all your material is showing up correctly including that image and that final paragraph that's there now the last thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and put this company information or this footer information at the bottom. And again, the social media sharing tools we're going to add in at a later time. And what I'm going to do to make this just real quick is I'm going to highlight this, copy it, come down in here to my footer section and just paste that in. And a lot of people, I've got to put that in a paragraph tag. There we go. Always make sure you close your tags properly. That's probably the item that causes most people the greatest difficulty is they forget to close a tag. And you've seen me, even though I, I do this every day, I forgot to close um, my box tag up above. Now, if you want special symbols inside of your code or on your page, you need to learn the HTML codes for them. And I actually um, have a handout um, that goes with um, uh, the the materials for this course that has a number of these um, on it uh, but you can just simply go to Google and type in HTML symbol codes and you'll find a whole bunch of them I want to place the copyright symbol right here in between or right before copyright and I'm gonna go ahead and type an ampersand and then the word copy and a semicolon and that is the HTML code that puts in the copyright symbol. Let's save this and preview it in a browser. And when we go down to the bottom, you should see the copyright symbol that's right there. And there are lots and lots of these codes that are out there for almost any symbol that you'd want. So we've gone ahead now and we've placed all of our content inside of um, our containers. 
and we've got a good start on our home page. And again, a lot of people at this point, they get concerned because this doesn't have any formatting at all. All it is is the content. And obviously my images you know, may have some formatting on them. But everything is just sort of laid out on the page. It doesn't look anything at all like this. And at this point, it shouldn't look anything like this. Because you'll remember our process that we went through, or that we're going through. Step three was to create the HTML structure. Step four was to add the sample content to the structure. And the next step that we're going to work on is to create the page presentation, the CSS, all the formatting and positioning. This should be exactly how your page should look at this point. And to sort of emphasize that, I'm going to go ahead and close these items off here. And I'm going to come back into Dreamweaver and I'm going to close these items. And here is the completed version of the Manchester project right there. And I'm going to go ahead and open up main.html here and preview it in my browser. There we go. And you can see the page looks exactly the way it should. If I go ahead and look at the code for this page, there's a lot of code here in the head section. But what I want to point your attention to really quickly is are these items right here. These are the links to the different style sheets that we're working with. And you remember I said all of our main styles are going to go into a style sheet called styles.css that's inside of the CSS folder. Watch what happens if I delete that line and save it and then open this up in a browser. You can see it's almost exactly the same as our project. It's a little bit different, but almost exactly the same. So that one file, styles.css, is what formats our entire page. If I paste that back in there again and save it, if I refresh this page, there's all the formatting. So all of your formatting, your presentation, your positioning, everything is going to be in that CSS file. When you first start off, you should have a nice, clean, unformatted page just like this. This should be exactly the way everything should look at this stage. In the next video we're going to begin to learn about CSS and how to write CSS. And again just um, just like when you started learning the HTML in the beginning it's going to seem a little bit confusing but as you go along and as you work with these things um, things will start to make more sense to you. And just like HTML most of CSS, the, the code words, are very self-explanatory. You know, in other words, if uh, you want to format an H1 tag in CSS, you just call it out by indicating H1. So there's a lot of connection between the HTML and the CSS. So don't worry um, if some of the CSS appears confusing. Um, at the beginning, uh, it will make more sense as you go along. So again, the next few videos are going to be an introduction to CSS, and then we're going to go ahead and write the actual CSS for this page. So I'll see you in the next video.